All right, so this lesson is all about writing and solving percent problems. And it's really only going to deal with one specific type of percent problem, but we'll get to that in a little bit. Uh, I want to start off with the idea of what is a percent? Uh, what is it actually? And you've heard of things like 0% where this mark here is circle, a forward slash and another circle. This represents percent. Things like 0%, 75%, 100%, 1%, 2%, 3%, 4%. Things like that. And so from that, uh, we know that 0% means absolutely nothing. That is 0. 100% represents a whole or everything that you're talking about. So percents generally on a scale of 0 to 100 represent a portion of a whole. 0 means nothing. 100 means everything. And depending on where that scale is in between, and you can think about it as a number line, determines how much of that whole you have. You have from 0 to 100, so 0 means nothing, and 100 means everything. 50, 50 in terms of a percentage, 50% means half. Because 50 is half of 100. So that is one thing that a percent is. But in order to solve and understand problems that involve percents, you have to see it in a different way, which is as a ratio to 100. So 100% is a ratio of 100 to 100. 75% is a ratio of 75 to 100. 15% is a ratio of 15 to 100. 19% is a ratio of 19 to 100. But more often than not, when we're writing percents, we're going to write them as fractions. 15 out of 100. 19 out of 100. Both of these are percents. The one on the left represents 15%. And the one on the right represents 19%. So let's take a look at fraction, excuse me, let's take a look at percents in a bit more visual of a way. And we're going to talk about it in terms of a bar being filled. And if the bar is completely empty, 0% of the bar is filled. If the bar is completely full, 100% of the bar is filled. And we can represent any other percents between 0 and 100 by imagining this as just a vertical number line. From 0 to 100, a vertical number line. So if we wanted to represent 50%, we would find it halfway up the bar, which is approximately there. Shade in everything below it. That is 50%. So let's take a look at a few more examples of these exactly like that. 50% is the blue bar on the far left. 75% uh, the green bar uh, in the center of the ones that are filled, and 20% as the third bar from the left. So each of these, this is going to always going to be something that's approximate. You're not going to get anything exactly at 50%, 75%, 20% down a bar. But I want you to take these and looking at 10%, 90%, and 25% as the three left-hand bars, go ahead and pause the video and see if you can create those percentages as vertical bars. Um, so just like the 50%, 75%, 20%, see what you can do with 10, 90, and 25. Well, 10% is going to be very close to the bottom, about half as tall as 20%, somewhere around there. 90 is going to be somewhere up here. And 25 will be somebody somewhere close to 20, but a little bit higher. So your bar should look something like this. They don't have to look exactly like this. Again, these are all approximations because we're drawing approximate percents in a bar, but this is how we represent it. 90% is where 90 would be on a vertical number line from 0 to 100, and the same for 25, 10, and 20. So now we're going to get to what the actual percent problem is. For example, what is 75% of 60? And these are called percents of these are the most basic types of percent problems. This is the only one that we're going to be talking about in this video. We'll look at uh, more of them later in another extension video. We're looking at what is 75% of 60. Now, we didn't go through and talk about percentages 
of a bar for nothing because we're going to take one of these percentage bars and we're going to use it to solve our problem. We want to know 75% of 60. Well, the bar itself won't help, but we're actually going to create two bars. One is going to be our percent bar because that's part of the problem. The other half of the problem is this 75% of 60. Some number less than 60, 75% of it in fact, is what we're looking for. Now we can, if we went through just the process with numbers, we could get through it and we could solve it, but this vertical, but this way with the vertical bars and visual will make it much easier to understand what it is that's going on and why it is that we do what we do. So if one bar is going to be with our percents, the other bar is going to be representing 60, or whatever that number is that we're finding a percent of or for. So just like the bar at the, uh, for the percents at the bottom starts at 0%, we're going to start the bar for 60 at 0. Now these two bars are going to represent the exact same thing. The bar on the right represents it as a percent, and the bar on the left represents it as that number, but whatever 50% on this bar is translates to 50% on our number bar. Whatever 90% of our percent bar is, will move across and represent 90% of our number bar, because those bars are going to be filled up to the same point. Now we have to look at it. Once we've drawn our percent problems with the two boxes, and we always start at zero, and our right-hand bar is always going to be a percent, now we have to figure out what it is, are we, what is it that we're going to put on the bar? What do we know? What are we looking for? Well, we know that we have this thing that's 75%. Well, 75% is right about there on the bar. So all of this under here is going to be filled in. This is 75%. And because these bars start at the same place, which is zero, and go to the same place, in the percent case, 100%, and for 60, 60 is the 100%, we know that all we have to do is move this line over here, and right here, this is 75% of 60. Now I invite you at the, for a second to look at this bar and see if you can predict what kind of number that's going to be. It's going to be greater than 30, because 30 is halfway through. Maybe it's as high as 50, maybe it's not quite as high as 50. We're not entirely sure, but we know that if we represent 75% on the right-hand bar, if we put the box in the exact same place and draw a line at the same place of 75%, we will find 75% of 60, at least visually. So I've added some ticks on the left-hand box so you can build it up saying, uh, well, it's got to be greater than 40, less than 50, maybe somewhere around 45. We can't be entirely sure because, again, these are just the best we can do in terms of representing 75% and where things are. So, so far, we've gone through two stages. One is we draw the problem with two boxes, and two, we set up what we know. Now that we do this, we have to figure out a way of actually using it. Well, it turns out that this is all the setup we need to do before we can change it to numbers. We're going to write each box as a ratio. Now, we said that a, that a percent was a ratio out of 100. So when we draw our ratio, our 100 has to go to the bottom. It is a percent is a ratio out of 100, a ratio to 100. And because the only thing left we have on the percent bar, other than the zero, which is not particularly helpful, is the 75, that 75 is going to go here. And this is actually how we write 75% as a fraction. 75% 75 is 75 to 100, 75 out of 100. Now, if we want to write each box as a ratio, we can't just, and we write our 75% as 75 as 100, we can't just choose any old order for these. They have to be in the same order. So this number, which I'm going to call x, because I don't know what it is, should be on top like the 75 is. If the number's on top, the 75 is on top, and vice versa. And then that is all going to be out of whatever the 100% is, which is 60. So just like our 100%, that 100 is going to go on the bottom. So you're going to take both boxes, you're going to do the exact same thing. Now we have two ratios, and we've set up this entire thing to represent that both ratios are the same. So we set them equal, and then this is just a proportion, and we can solve it with cross products. 
multiplying, dividing, etc. Um, I'm not going to go through the entire process of cross products right now um, in the video. If you need a refresher, go back to the solving proportions video, but we find out that x oh, excuse me, is equal to 45. So what we've done in terms of setting up the bars for the percents equation is we've drawn the boxes starting at zero. We put in everything that we know and that we're looking for. We know that one number is the 100%, zero is zero percent, and we've drawn whatever percentage we're looking at. We've written both boxes as ratios, and we've set them equal and solved as a proportion. In slightly easier and less uh, verbose language, our steps are one, draw two boxes, one is always your percent. Two is show what you know and what you're solving for. Three is write each as a ratio, and four, is set them equal and solve as a proportion. So for each of these problems here, these are percent of questions. As I said, there are two other types of percent questions, but we're only going to deal with these here. Take the process that we've looked at before and set up for each of one, two, and three. Uh, set up your percent boxes, mark what you know, write them as ratios, and see if you can solve these percent problems here after you've written them as a proportion. So go ahead and uh, pause the video now and come back and look at them. Well, for each of these, the first process is always to set up the box. And I've set up everything for you, so we'll go through the entire process. For number one, where it's 80% of 45, well, the first thing we need to do is we need to set up our two boxes. We have our zeros at the bottom because both of these are going to be out of zero. We have our 100% at the top of our percent box. That 100% is 45. We're finding out what 80% of the 45 is. So the 45 is everything. We've marked the 80% on the right-hand side as a colored box. When we've drawn the line on the 45 bar to represent that same location, written them as a proportion, excuse me, written them as ratios, x over 45 is the same as 80 over 100, set them equal and found out that x should be 36. For number two, we've done the same thing, 0% and 0, 100% and 150 because we're finding 100, we're finding what 50% is of this number 150. We've drawn our percent bars so that 50% is here, marked the same place on the other one because these represent the exact same number. X out of 150 is the same as 50 out of 100. Set them equal to each other because they represent the exact same ratio and solved it as a proportion. X is equal to 75. And finally, for number three, again, set up 0% at the bottom, 100%, which is the same as 60, because we're finding 45% of this 100%, whatever we're finding a percent of, that is your 100%. Uh, marked 45% on the bar, which is close to, uh, at a similar level to the 50%, because again, this is just the best that we can do, x over 60, is the same as 45 over 100. Set those two equal as a proportion, and you find that x is equal to 27. So I know we've gone through a lot of different things here, but the process for solving any kind of percent question, any at all, and we'll talk about some of the other ones later, is to just follow these four steps visually with the bars. So you can see and approximate about what am I looking for. You're going to draw two boxes where one is the percent and the other represents the numbers. You're going to show what you know in those boxes, which is either the percentage and marking the, in this case, it's you know the percentage and you know what you're finding a percent of. What you're finding a percent of is always your 100%. You're going to write each as a ratio, remembering that they must have the same order in order to be uh, representing the same ratio, and finally you set them equal and solve. At this point, it's just a proportion. So any solving any type of percent problems just involves setting up the two bars and solving the percent as a proportion with two equal ratios. And we use the bars so we can visually see that these two ratios are in fact equal to each other.